TestGrid is a visualization platform for CI data. It is an open source project developed by Google to help people visualize their CI processes in a grid. It is used by a number of communities to track the status of their tests and build in a visually friendly format. TestGrid primarily reports categorical metrics about which tests passed or failed during specific builds over a configurable time window. So what does it display and where does it fit in the context of a CI process? We will look into this in further detail, but what a typical tested dashboard looks like is it's an aggregation of multiple tests over time period and each grid represents whether a certain test is passing, that is green, or failing, that is red. In a typical development lifecycle, once the developer has opened a pull request with some commits containing some changes, their changes would go through a CI platform which runs a series of tests and builds and the results of the tests are displayed here on test grid. So now, in order to quantify the current state of the CI workflow and identify any gaps within the CI processes better, we can calculate certain key performance indicator metrics related to the test runs. By calculating relevant metrics and key performance indicators related to the running tests, that can help get to the root of the problematic build failures and help discover recurring patterns within the running tests and ultimately help a developer with their development workflows. Now let's take a look at the test grid workflow. So we start by collecting data. As we discussed earlier, test grid has information about status of running multiple tests over a period of time. The data set contains categorical metrics about running multiple tests. So again, to uh, have more insights and work with this data programmatically in a Jupyter Hub environment, which is a tool used by data scientists to run interactive notebooks, we need a way to access the visual grids that were displayed on the test grid data programmatically. For that, we create a connection from the Jupyter notebooks to the test grid URL and download all select dashboards from test grid by scraping the HTML. This allows us to dig deeper into various features of data and gain an in-depth understanding of the data that won't be very obvious just by looking at the dashboards. Next, we calculate the metrics and apply some ML and AI techniques. So once we have collected the data, our goal is to apply AI or machine learning techniques to improve the CI workflow. But first, we start by applying certain analysis and, and aggregating various tests, detecting patterns in the data, which can help quantify and evaluate the current state of the CI workflow. So for instance, if developers and managers were to manage the allocation of resources for CI processes, and in order to save these resources, it would be really vital to know if a particular test has a higher probability to fail, or if we could find an optimal stopping point of a build run after, the, after which the build would most definitely fail. And to do that, we calculate some relevant metrics and key performance indicators, which not only help us evaluate the AI-based enhancements we make to the CI processes, but also pinpoint to developers what specific areas need the most improvement and therefore should be devoted more resources to. Next, we have an automated pipeline to do this in a recurring fashion. So after the collection of data, model training, and all other parts of the machine learning workflow, we have to ensure that these tasks are sequential and continuous. So we automate the sequential running of the notebooks using a simple workflow, using tools like Elira and Kubeflow pipelines, which is a platform for building and deploying scalable machine learning workflows. We can run our notebooks in an automated fashion. Finally, in order to help the developers and stakeholders view KPIs, metrics, and aggregated results of their tests visually, we create automated dashboards that can better help analyze the status of multiple tests, investigate the problematic tests, builds, or jobs. Now let's take a look at the demo. So for the demo, we can quickly go to the test grid platform itself, which is an aggregation of test build results. So if we click on Red Hat, we see that different versions of the OpenShift project use test grid to view the results of their CI processes. 
So as you can see here, there are a number of different tabs for different releases of OpenShift and it is further divided into informing, blocking or broken, which are the different test suits being used here. So if we go to a particular tab or a dashboard, such as Red Hat OpenShift OCP release 4.1 blocking, so we can see that there is a signal whether the tests are passing, failing or are flaky for this particular test mostly are failing. So to look into these tests themselves and view them in a grid, let's just click on them. So now we can see that this is the grid view and this displays the results of the test run at different times. So what you're seeing is really whether or not a certain test passed or failed at a certain point. So this is essentially a 2D array which we can do some analysis on as data scientists. And to get this data into a form of suitable analysis, we try to access this programmatically in a Jupyter Hub environment. So let's take a look at that. So this is the Jupyter Hub environment and we already have some notebooks ready here. So we're gonna start with collecting the data through the notebook called Ketraw Data. So in this notebook, we fetch the relevant data from testgrid.kates.io using basic HTML scraping techniques. So um, we start by connecting to the URL uh, and try to fetch all the associated dashboard names. Then we iterate through all the dashboard names to collect the associated dashboard data and after collecting the data, we finally store this on Ceph to ensure any further analysis. Now let's take a look at how we compute metrics from this raw test grid data. So in order to ensure consistency, we have a helper notebook, which outlines a template for a KPI metric contribution if you would like to contribute to the work of developing additional KPIs and metrics. So in this notebook, we import the raw data stored in S3 storage. We also introduce some helper functions that help in encoding what test status each value in test grid corresponds to. And then encoding the data set into lists that can be used in creating data frame with the metric values. So, for example, in this notebook, we have performed a calculation to find out the number of flakes for a given dashboard, grid, or a test. So to compute a number of metrics to evaluate the current status of the CI workflow, we have these metric notebooks which compute these. So let's look at one metric notebook in detail, which is the build pass failure metric. So in this notebook, the key performance indicator that we would like to create greater visibility into and track over time is the percent of builds that passed or failed. This can be used to capture the build success rate, that is the number of successful builds or deployments relative to the total number of builds and deployments. So we start off by importing the libraries and helper functions from the metric template notebook. And then we try to import the raw data from Ceph. To or in order to perform the metric calculation, we first start by finding all the tests which are failing, that is, they have a status code of 12, as mentioned in the metric template notebook. After doing this, we move to collect uh, all the tests that are passing and have a status score of 1. So now that we have a list of tests that were passing and failing, let's calculate the build pass and build fail percentage. So as we can see here, the build failure percentage is 48.68 and the build pass percentage is around 50.94%. So post the metric calculation step, we use the Python package Seaborn to visualize the build pass and build fail across time. So this is how it looks like. So we also have interactive visualization for each of these metrics, which will we will take a look at shortly when we demonstrate the superset dashboard. So after all of this, we try to uh, combine the build passing and build failing metric into one data frame and then further store it into Ceph's S3 storage. We saw how to compute various metrics from the raw test grid data 
Now it's time to run all of these notebooks in automation. We have already created an ML pipeline using Elira. This ML pipeline consists of two steps which run sequentially. The first step is the get raw data notebook which downloads data from test grid and the second are various metric calculation notebooks which run in parallel. We can trigger this pipeline from the Elira UI and move over to the Kubeflow pipelines to view the running jobs. As you can see here, the pipeline called the AI for CI demo was triggered and has started running. Once completed, the pipeline steps display a green check mark next to them much like this. We can automate this pipeline to run on a recurring basis such that the test grid raw data collection and metric calculation steps occurred on a daily basis and stored the data on S3 storage. We now move over to the superset dashboard where we have created interactive charts to display the previously calculated metrics from the data stored on S3. For example, these charts tell us the total number of test cases, the number of tests that passed, the number of tests that are failing, etc. We can also view metrics such as the mean length of failures, which is how many times was the build or the test suite run before a failing test started to pass, the mean time to fix, which is how much time was taken before a failing test started to pass. Metrics like this can provide engineering managers with insights such as which tests or platforms have the most long lasting failures or how long does it take for a failing test to start passing again. We can also filter this dashboard by tabs, grids and tests to view specific metrics to our product and test of interest. For example, if we filter by the grid Periodic CI OpenShift 4.6 release, we will be able to see the number of test cases run for this particular grid and all the associated metrics for this grid. All right, so let's engage. If you want to engage with this project, there are multiple ways to get started and we compile a list of ways you can engage with this project on this URL that you see on the screen. You can interact with and leverage the various open source CI data sources that we work with on this project, along with the data collection scripts and the various exploratory analysis. There are interactive and reproducible notebooks for this entire project available right now for anybody to start using on the public JupyterHub instance on Operate First. We also have interactive superset dashboards for you to start interacting with and viewing the public KPIs. We also have an interactive model endpoint available for the GitHub Time to Merge ML model, which you can try out. We run automated AI ML workflows using Elira and Kubeflow pipelines. So if you wish to run ML workflows and automate your Jupyter notebooks, you can follow the guide that we have compiled. And to learn more about the different analysis and notebooks within this project, you can check out our YouTube video playlist. This is an open source project that we started within our small team at Red Hat. If this project is useful to you, or if you are working on similar efforts, we strongly encourage your contributions to this effort. There are various ways in which you can contribute to our existing notebooks or contribute additional KPI metrics or analysis. So if you would like to contribute to the work of developing additional KPIs and metrics, we have a video tutorial and a helper notebook which outlines the template for a KPI metric contribution. If you would like to contribute to an existing ML workflow or model by improving it, we highly encourage that. Or if you wish to even add your ML analysis and model, we have an issue template for contributing to additional ML analysis as well.